All right, welcome to the sneak peek for uh, something you're super excited about. Barry and I have been working on this for a little while now, um, along with the amazing people you see on stage here. We'll talk about everybody in turn, but first we'll talk about DEF CON Academy. So, uh, is there a, can people see the slides somewhere? They can. Oh, they can. Yes. Oh, great, perfect, all right. So, first things first, on the slide of the URL, ctf.defcon academy. While we talk, go there, ctf.defcon academy. On the bottom, there's a link to get started with a little challenge race. It's not extraordinarily hard stuff. It's, it's test your Linux knowledge, how much Linux do you know? At the end, we're gonna do a little award ceremony for the people farthest ahead in that race. We'll just see how many people we have time to give challenge coins to. It's gonna be awesome. And we'll check in throughout the, the talk if you have time. Awesome, okay, welcome. Let's talk about us. Yes, I think that's a great idea. All right, Perry, take it away. I don't know why I'm first, but hi, my name is Perry Adams. I'm currently a uh, special assistant to the director at DARPA, but before that, I was, as you can see on the screen, a uh, CTF player. That picture in the middle is proof that at one point in time, I did know how to use a computer. Uh, the jury's still out. I don't know if that's still the case. It's out. Uh oh. Uh, case in point. Computers. How do they even work? <clears throat> uh, but I played for uh, the CTF team RPI SEC, and that picture is of us playing at DEF CON finals uh, in 2018. And uh, RPI SEC and CTF was really how I got started playing, uh, I got started in computer security. And that's really what we're going to be talking about today, the kind of uh, education that that provided me and how we want to give that to the rest of you. As I was putting together these slides, uh, what was next to all those pictures was a picture of my cat. And because of Steph Pond, I felt it was appropriate to at least have one of those in the slides. Uh, after I played CTF for a while, I ran DEF CON CTF for a little bit. Uh, that is uh, from one of the years where we were writing challenges. <clears throat> that picture is of uh, three, uh, two of my uh, uh, fellow challenge authors, the year that our challenge melted the infrastructure just a little bit, which goes to show that computers are hard and I'm not sure if I know how to use them correctly. <clears throat> and now in my day job, I am at DARPA where one of the things that I have done is create AICC, which if you haven't seen yet, I really encourage you to go check it out over there. We're very proud of what we've been able to do. <clears throat> and the kind of software security challenges that AICC is working to address is exactly what we hope to educate people about with DEF CON Academy. And uh, finally, I have uh, this picture up here because I talked about how I learned about computer security by playing CTF, but what was so formative for me was having my teammates on RPI Sec to help me learn. When I first got started, they told me that I could not have, hypothetically, let's say, they told me I could not have Ida until I had learned how to solve a CTF challenge using Objump. And if you haven't seen the output of Jump, that's what a binary looks like. It's much less pretty than Ida. And this was, of course, before we had Ghidra. But when I was doing this, I had people I could call, I, had, uh, I could phone a friend, I could get help. And that's really what we're trying to do, what they've been trying to do with DEF CON Academy. Thanks, Barry. So before I talk about myself, which I love doing, I want to uh, check on one terrifying thing. Oh, this is counting upwards. Okay, thank God. All right, awesome. So then we can, we can just calmly co uh, continue. All right, I'm Zardis, and I am, uh, I can say with some trepidation that I've been talking to, that I'm way too loud, um, that I've been coming to DEF CON since DEF CON 9. Right? This is super cool, DEF CON 9. Is that my feedback? You gotta keep them separated. Uh, DEF CON 9 was, it's this guy. Huh? 
Oh. That's what it's like working with Jan. Every day. All right. Ah. Uh. I'll leave this here. Do you want to every time? Every time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Dark Tangent. <laughs> Honorary AV uh, Maestro. Okay, cool. So, um, I've been coming to DEF CON since DEF CON 9, right? This was a long, long time ago. Um, and uh, from DEF CON 9 up until DEF CON 17, I would come to DEF CON, I'd wander the halls, I'd look around at all this incredible hacking, I'd get really amped up, but I wasn't really making progress. I was slowly, very, very slowly building up my skills over the course of eight years. And then after eight years, an eternity in cybersecurity time, I finally got into CTF. I started playing CTF with Team Shellfish. And then my life as a hacker, ah, my life as a hacker accelerated rapidly. Uh, within a couple of years from that, I created with uh, my uh, colleagues one of the uh, most powerful binary analysis tools on the planet. Later, with uh, also amazing colleagues, we started hosting DEF CON CTF. We went from running it, uh, from playing in it to hosting it. Then I became a professor. Is that still us? I just gonna have to my shoes. I gotta get to my, all right. Uh, later, we went from, uh, playing to hosting, and then I became professor at Arizona State University. <laughs> Dude, I feel like I'm in a sci-fi. This is awesome. <laughs> this is great. We can probably just turn this one off. Yeah. ET did a great, like, cool. Can we turn off, too? Ah, oh, there it is. You got it. Awesome. OK. So um, and all of this happened relatively quickly once I started playing CTF and once my security knowledge started getting ramped up very rapidly. And there was this inflection point in DEF CON 17, but that took eight years to get there, right? And what I've been thinking for a long, long time is how do we accelerate that? What was missing here? And Perry alluded to it. When I started, I didn't have a group that could mentor. I was a high schooler, but that doesn't stop people. I've seen high schoolers accelerate rapidly in cybersecurity skill when they have the right environment to enable them, right? And so our question was, our question was, how do we actually make this possible for the DEF CON community? All right, preview, it looks like a belt. All right, so DEF CON 17, Shellfish, DEF CON CTF. This is my view into what the difference was from before I was a pro to after I was a pro. And, and spoiler alert, I'm still not a pro. But I would tell all of my students, if you want to get really great at cybersecurity, you have to go play CTF, right? And this is a picture, for example, of my students playing uh, uh, one of the CTFs that I hosted with Adam. Uh, who's sitting right here. And they show up and they do awesome. But this is the success stories that you see. What you don't see in the CTF community is the hundreds and hundreds of students, for every one that play CTF, that try to play CTF, and face the reality that capture the flag competitions are not designed for education. They're designed to test your skills. So this is intentional in CTF. A CTF competition is created by hackers for hackers to challenge hackers specifically. And no one wants to play a CTF where the answers are all obvious and the uh, challenges are easy and so on. And, and so CTFs basically by definition become a very boring teaching tool. 
And when I got started playing CTF, the thing that was fun about it was that I had a team who I'd play with, and we'd go and we'd spend 48 hours in a lecture hall that we certainly did not, uh, we weren't allowed to actually be in overnight, uh, but that's what we would do. And it felt uh, very collaborative and we could learn from each other. But for many people, they don't have that resource. Yeah, and so figuring out what a replacement resource is for that, that's one of the challenges that we kind of said to ourselves that resulted in DEF CON Academy. That's DEF CON Academy's first goal. Our first goal is getting people from DEF CON 9 to DEF CON 17. Getting them to the point where they can start, have the skills to start playing CTF. To start contributing actively in cybersecurity. And then we have a second question. Uh, something that I've seen recently as I've trained up more and more students with cybersecurity knowledge is that people learn this knowledge, they have the technical skills to dive into CTF competitions, to really start accelerating more and more and more, but they, there's still something missing. The competition part of a CTF competition, the chaotic environment, the uh, lack of educational resources specific to do with cutting edge CTF challenges, that makes things hard. And that is where the mentorship that Barry mentioned comes in. So how do we streamline that process? Get people, once they have technical skills, to actually engage with a community where they can test these skills and, and interact with others that are doing so. Then, how do we keep pulling that talent back into DEF CON? so that we can have a kind of self-reinforcing loop that'll continue with the community, continue building the community more and more. A little louder. <laughs> then, then I get the, if, if I do this, hold on, test. All right, we're still good, okay. No, uh, you know, tone of God over here. Okay, so, um, and then of course, once people go and they, they, they learn all the cybersecurity stuff and they're cybersecurity master hackers, how do we get people to actually be able to use this as a living? How many of you make a living doing cybersecurity? Awesome. How many don't but would like to? All right. So how do we get you to the place where you can make that living? And then how many of you are cybersecurity pros? Master hackers. Uh, I see my students trying to raise their hands over there. Uh, one day, well, we'll get you there as well. All right, so the answer, of course, DEF CON Academy. And DEF CON Academy is going to at least take steps to solve all of these problems. So, Perry, what do you hope to see out of DEF CON Academy? Well, so DARPA has a history of funding work in uh, cybersecurity education, but specifically in things like binary exploitation, vulnerability research, et cetera. Uh, things like DARPA Chess uh, focused on uh, improving computer human interactions. That was something that you all worked on. Uh, we actually have some other PMs in the office or in the audience who are leading some of these efforts. And so that was really what DEF CON Academy came out of for, for DARPA, was how can we bring the cybersecurity education resources that we've been developing and open sourcing uh, with uh, the many groups that DARPA works with, including ASU, and how do we bring them to the community? And so what I really hope to get out of this is uh, we've spent uh, a decade more than that uh, researching how to best educate people in this space. Uh, that combined with all of the expertise that running DEF CON CTF, playing DEF CON CTF, and other kinds of CTFs have built up, I, I think there's a huge amount of potential to revolutionize how we do cybersecurity education, especially in the vulnerability research, binary exploitation, memory safety space, which is so fundamentally important today. I agree. And you know what I would build on that with is that whatever specific first uh, goal you set for students, binary exploitation, memory safety, et cetera, the, if you can get a hacker to skill up to that, you can get them to skill up 
to web security. You can get them to scale up to network operations, to threat hunting. It all folds together and use a common uh, process of learning and thinking about our own experiences, talking long, long hours with Dark Tangent, we came up with this idea that, hey, let's actually make a part of DEF CON that is hyper-optimized to make this happen for students. So, but I want to add one other thing too. The other part of this is, is uh, set up and the pain and suffering that goes into actually creating an environment in which you can learn. Uh, and the infrastructure part is boring and sometimes we don't think about that as research, but having played a lot of CTF, I know that setting up an environment is very annoying, very painful. And when I first started out, that was the last thing I wanted to learn how to do. I didn't know how to boot Linux when I joined uh, RPI Sec. That's very embarrassing. Uh, so I'm sharing it here today and we're not going to spread that. Uh, and so I think one of the best aspects of this and one of the uh, other pillars is that it removes the initial uh, pain from learning and it puts you into the fun environment immediately. So how can we take a random DEF CON attendee, grab them out of the hallway, and once they start sc stop screaming and hitting us, actually give them an opportunity to just start learning immediately? No startup costs, no confusion, just go. And in other words, how can we take this DEF CON 9 to DEF CON 17, eight years, and we narrow them down? Well, we're not. I, the I actually think the best way to put it is how can we make Connor do all of the infrastructure setup for uh, DEF CON attendees? Exactly. It's uh, basically uh, tasking all the way down. Um, because the answer to that is Connor will find his own student. <laughs> All right, so there's two parts to learning. There's a lot of learning, research. Learn learning is, is a thing that humans have done maybe for years, maybe even decades. So there's theory and practice, right? You might say, well, okay, let's have a DEF CON Academy that, that runs courses. We'll like have, uh, you know, our PowerPoint slides, we'll pull in hackers off the, out of the hallway and we'll uh, have them viewing the PowerPoint slides. And I did this. I do this a lot. This is a picture of my students from last semester. No, I'm just kidding. I pulled this off the internet. But, because my students are all riveted in class. But. Just like you all. Exactly. You have all been in classes throughout your life where things are boring, people are rambling on about the stack gets subtracted from when a function starts. And you get a lot of information and not a lot of it sticks, right? And you might have like one or two practice problems, but the modern state, unfortunately, of cybersecurity education is actually pretty poor. And this is uh, really interesting because it's understandable academically. There's this thing called the learning pyramid, full of really awesome made up numbers where you know, you can say, hey, if I go and I lecture to you, you will learn like 5% of the material or retain 5% of my, the material. But if I, you know, uh, have you read about it uh, yourself, you'll, you'll learn more. And if I uh, have you practice, actually practice the stuff, you will learn a majority. You'll learn 75% of it. And then, of course, this whole thing, the bottom, you got to teach someone to learn it all. But this is called the learning pyramid. It's like uh, all... Um, uh, a lot of actual education research that has come into, gone into building this. And it really um, showcases kind of what's wrong with a lot of modern cybersecurity education. And what you end up with most modern coursework is you get an enormous amount of information, you pump up your brain, you get the theoretical info, but you can't really apply it in practice. And it's like if in Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi made, uh, explained to the Karate Kid how to wash a car and they never actually did the wax on, wax off and then he throws him into the ring and the kid gets beat up and we don't have uh, our awesome uh, ending. All right? So, can't quite do existing coursework. All right, well that's not a problem because there's a whole conference where every year for an entire, weekend, people descend into Las Vegas 
and learn and, 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 and celebrate hacking and party. Which conference is that, Jan? I forget. The name escapes me at the moment. Jeff, do you know? Sorry, I'm unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has a... Yeah, I've heard rumors. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it might be um, Penny Arcade Expo. No. Of course we're talking about you all, about DEF CON. But I went to a DEF CONs. It's very easy to go to a DEF CON and wander around aimlessly. Who here has aimlessly wandered through DEF CON? Yeah. Yeah, me too. And, and, and it's an incredible experience. You have to, of course, aimlessly wander through DEF CON for some amount of time. But we also want to have a much more streamlined, optimized, and guided path to learning available to the people that want it. All right. So then. When I started as a professor, I said, okay, I understand all this stuff. Now I see that CTF is a problem because I keep sending my students to CTF and they keep, you know, just disappearing. <laughs> yeah. But there are these things called war games. War games are these incredible collections of challenges online. I maintain a uh, list at wargame.nexus if you're interested. Hundreds, thousands of hacking challenges available to anyone that wants them. You can go and, 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 and start, right? The problem is it's very similar to what plagues CTF from an uh, educational perspective, right? Perry, you've done war games. I have, and actually, I think RPI Sex, Modern Binary Exploitation, one of the first uh, online courses uh, in, this, uh, in this stuff is on that list. And that was how I learned. It is, and Modern Binary Exploitation is an excellent example of a war game created educationally because it has educational materials and it has challenges to reinforce this. But the majority of war games out on the internet are also made to show off the challenge writing skill of the author, which is awesome, and test and, 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 and challenge the uh, people solving, which it makes it very difficult to actually learn with. I'll say that I could not have done the course material I did. I could not have done the war games I did without having friends who could help me when I got, when I got stuck. That, yes. was, that was the defining factor. And, and so what, what I found when I would push this war game idea is that it worked as long as I was there to mentor the students about once a week. The moment I disappeared, the war game attempt broke down as a learning uh, route at scale, right? And, you know, you can't really blame people for this. They're, they're, you can only sit so long at a computer confused and, and lost. Look at this picture. This guy's even thinking of going to the beach down there on the top left for some reason um, before it gets too old. But, as Barry said, there are good educational style materials out there. And we kind of ran with this. And this is something we're bringing into DEF CON Academy. We created Pwn College. Yon, what is Pwn College? Well, Barry, I'm glad you asked. Pwn College is a revolution in <laughs> online security education. But it's only one. Is, it's one, a paradigm shift. It's a paradigm shift. Yeah. Jeff understands the uh, DOD language that I'm trying to bring to the talk today. Thank exactly. You. But we're, the talk isn't necessarily about phone college. We're using phone college as an example here, as one part of DEF CON Academy. Uh, phone college is an online teaching tool first and challenge tool second. And I'll show you what I mean. The way that we teach in phone college is we take a topic over here. We have this, this, this guided path, carefully curated through, for real, we're 10 minutes late, uh, uh, 10 minutes left. I'm just starting to, to talk. 10 minutes until belting. <laughs> till okay. belting, oh, okay, okay. And I'd encourage you to visit uh, pwn.college uh, yeah. right now. Jan claims that you can even do it on your phone. Yeah, you can. So, quick thing, Pwn College, guided materials, it has, lectures that introduce the core of a topic, that 5%. And then to explore the edge cases that you will be confused about if you only retain that 5%, 
we have challenge problems, hundreds of challenge problems that will pull your knowledge wider and wider and wider and let you understand the concept. It's as if we took Mr. Miyagi and we put him in your web browser. <laughs> Bone College starts in the very beginning, which sure. you, some of you are doing right now with the Linux Luminarium, goes through incredibly advanced material where by the time you finish Bone College, you will have exploited uh, JIT vulnerabilities in Chrome's V8, et cetera, et cetera. We have and I, I want to interject and say that this is all in your web browser, like you just said, and that is a fundamentally important concept here. Uh, when I uh, showed that uh, obj jump earlier, I was on my iPad and I needed a Linux terminal and I just pulled up Pwn College and I booted into it. But when you say there's V8 challenges, when you say there's Linux kernel challenges, that is the truly impactful thing. Students don't have to stand up their Linux kernel, they can go to the browser. Students don't have to stand up a Linux environment, they can go to the browser. And it's an Ubuntu uh, instance with Ghidra and Ida Free and all of the resources they might need. That is very powerful. And in fact, we can, well, let's see if we have time to demo it. We were going to demo it on stage, but that's fine. Um, there is an enormous amount of material already. We're building out more to pull DEF CON hackers kicking and screaming through into having a, a practical, demonstrable skills that they can then build up on. We have, uh, let's, uh, actually talk about one thing here. We have a set of material where at every stage of your cybersecurity journey, you get a reward. You've gamified learning and we've done it with belts. Over here in about 10 minutes, we'll have a belting ceremony where people that have gone through the material before will earn their belts and walk out of here belted. Who, the, uh, first, uh, the first of a yearly ceremony, something yeah. we'll talk about very soon. Who, uh, who here is going to get belted? Awesome. You guys start lining up. And we'll give you all a hand in a second. All right. So, uh, and, and, and this is a uh, tradition now in Pwn College that goes back a long way. This is uh, me with, with Connor at his PhD defense. Um, and he's uh, line up on the uh, on this a, side of the a stage. A bunch of belts here. We send them out all over the world, and we drive you into these crazy experiences with Pwn College, where, like we said earlier, you're exploiting V8, you're exploiting the Linux kernel. You understand all of this, ideally, understand it well on a practical perspective, when where you can demonstrably carry out these exploits, even though you might have come to Pwn College without knowing what Linux is, right? Sperry says, this is all doable on the internet. Turnkey, you just go to pwn.college and you start up. All right, so that's Pwn College. That's not DEF CON Academy. What is DEF CON Academy? DEF CON Academy will use Pwn College and other resources like Pwn College. Another amazing one is CryptoHack. Who here has heard of CryptoHack? Awesome, yeah, if you like Pwn College, also check out CryptoHack. It is in a lot of ways extremely similar in philosophy, but for cryptography, right? During the DEF CON party event, during this weekend, we're going to have a dedicated space where you can go and you can start Pwn College. You can continue Pwn College. You can earn belts for your uh, progress in Pwn College where we'll have dedicated tutors like Perry Adams who will sit down and remember when she was doing her first buffer overflow. And Connor Nelson and Adam Dupay. I don't know if you want me as your tutor. <laughs> um, we'll have skill demonstrations, we'll have uh, exploitation races between people that have just learned the material, we'll have a lot of hype. It's gonna be really, really awesome, right? And it's gonna be a place at DEF CON specifically created, specifically dedicated toward learning, specifically dedicated toward taking people that don't have the skills but want them and turning them into people who do have the skills and are ready to apply them. And 
we'll have something going year round. Year round, we will have regular help sessions live on Twitch or Discord where we will help people learn. Four minutes, and these, these, these guys. So, all right, we've covered the first third of the talk so far. Yeah. Don't worry. It's our fault. That's how we, we, we start in. But as I mentioned, after people build the skills, there's still a bit of a gap in applying them in practice, whether it's a chaotic environment of a CTF or a, um, <laughs> or a you know, the real world of, of cybersecurity. And so for the chaotic environment of the CTF, we have a solution. With DEF CON Academy, sorry, with DEF CON Academy, we are working with some of the top CTF teams in the world, the people that you see most years up there on the, the DEF CON uh, CTF contest area, hacking away their entire DEF CON with crazy, difficult, cutting edge challenges. And we're working with them to create a CTF academy, where as you graduate from those first eight years track, which hopefully will be compressed a lot, as you graduate from Pwn College and similar platforms, you will be apprenticed in CTF teams with top hackers, such as Clasm over there, who will lead you through, who will lead you through learning to actually dive into real security. All right, how will we help DEF CON itself with DEF CON Academy, not just the attendees, but the, the community? Well, we'll skip to one specific thing. A Couple days ago, or yesterday, I guess, uh, um, Jake Braun announced uh, DEF CON Franklin. DEF CON Franklin is an uh, initiative to help change the world by facilitating the volunteering of DEF CON resident expertise in places in the public world where they're needed. Well, they need the expertise. And DEF CON Academy will be creating a lot of expertise. We'll work to create a channel from DEF CON Academy uh, to uh, DEF CON Franklin to make this a reality and give you, who goes through DEF CON Academy, the output to show off those skills. All right. Um, let's talk about who is part of DEF CON Academy. Who is DEF CON Academy? <laughs> Could you say that for a second? First, the Chancellor. We have the Chancellor of DEF CON Academy, the one and only The Dark Tangent. Then, I forgot which order I have this in, the Vice Chancellor. The Paribus. Perry Adams, the Perry Bus. <clears throat> the Provost of DEF CON Academy, yours truly, Zardis. We have the Dean of Binary Exploitation, <laughs> Adam Dupay. Elbow, elbow, wrist, <laughs> wrist. Adam Dupay is a, uh, a master hacker who has hosted DEF CON CTF right by my side. You've seen him with me uh, at the clothing ceremonies. Very, very, very lucky to have him supporting our binary exploitation route. The Dean of Reverse Engineering, Fish. If you know CTF, you know this legend. Uh, probably one of the top reverse engineers in the world. Now, teaching you how to be like him, which is a terrifying thought. He can read straight assembly code. Yes, like can. it's uh, like it's source code. It's scary. All right, we got the dean of student advocacy, Rob Waz. Where are you, Rob Waz? Rob Waz is advocating for uh, students to get belts <laughs> off stage over here, and the dean of educational technologies, Ooh. Connor Nelson. He is the reason that Pwn College is usable over a browser, <laughs> or usable at all, really. I wasn't joking when I said he's the one doing the infrastructure. <laughs> All right. That being said, this is just what we're starting with. The goal right now is to get a minimum viable product of DEF CON Academy because we're launching in full next year. Next year, we'll have in-person uh, amazing uh, area where you'll be able to learn, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll have kind of a proof of concept of all of it. We'll have a proof of concept, at least one CTF team already Shelvish has signed up, maybe at least two CTF teams that are ready to take an apprentice awesome people. We'll have multiple uh, uh, platforms like Pwn College ready to go, and we'll have 
a couple of ways that you can go and help DEF CON. But as we extend, we need more deans. So if you are interested in being a dean of DEF CON Academy and are interested in spreading your knowledge to uh, budding hackers, talk to us. All right, let's do the belts. Okay, so Bone College has a uh, set of different steps of materials. First, students come in knowing nothing and they learn. And they learn introductory concepts in cybersecurity, command injection in uh, simple websites, uh, uh, file permission issues, these sort of things. After they learn that, they earn the orange belt. They move on to learn about how the security of programs fail. Things like buffer overflows, uh, things like how to reverse engineer programs to find issues, et cetera. They earn the yellow belt at that stage. They move on to system security, talking about going from user space to kernel space uh, through a race condition uh, uh, vulnerability inside a kernel driver, for example. Then they earn the green belt. And finally, they go through crazy esoteric and advanced concepts in software exploitation, stuff like microarchitectural uh, side channel attacks and other just absolutely wild things, and they earn their blue belt. So we'll be belting. Uh, do we have blue belts today? Yeah, three. Wow, three blue belts today. All right, awesome. So we'll be belting all sorts of people right now. We'll uh, go through them and Dark Tangent, and the rest of the DEF CON Academy team will confer their new hacker ranks. Let's start with the yellows? No, we're sure. Let's start with the orange, okay. Awesome, all right, come on up. All right, you can say your handle if you want. Uh, Gordon. All right. Bro? Congratulations. Cheers. Stand all right. Congrats. And uh, stand over here. No, oh, we'll get a picture. All right. And you are? Just John. John. Just John. Okay. Welcome. Yeah. No. All right. Up next, we have? I'm Chloe. Chloe, welcome. Congrats. Jonathan. Jonathan. Welcome. Spicy DLL. Spicy DLL. Congratulations. Derek Delta. Derek Delta. Derek Delta. Oh, Derek Delta. Yes. You're getting your blue belt. No, I'm getting my yellow belt. Your yellow belt. Okay, well, I recognize you anyways. All right. I'm such a noob. Sasha noob. <laughs> Josh L. What? Josh L. Josh L. Welcome. Thank you. Fod. Oh wow. Oh. Wherever. I'm Eddie. Eddie, welcome. All right. These hackers have pushed through increasingly insane material, like material that really is, is, is almost insane to have in some educational contexts. Uh, material where at the end of it, these blue belts out there. Huh? We'll, yeah, we'll do a picture. We'll stand forever. All right. So the blue belts over here, we're afraid of them because I am a thousand percent sure that with their knowledge, they're like one step away from exploiting the Punk College server itself. All right. Have a ring clap for everyone. All right. Let's honor these amazing hackers with their achievement. Awesome. I get the hell off my stage. All right. Good job, guys. So, five minute mark. Okay. So, this is an event that we're going to get increasingly crazy about um, in the in person. Now, let's do the. Uh, Jan is very sane. He would never get crazy about anything. Yeah, let's check out one more thing. ctf.defcon.academy. We'll see the scoreboard. 
Oh. Oh, it's not. That's interesting. It's definitely not. Yeah, it's not. One sec. I have to, uh, press. Let me load out this up. I think I have to hit escape. Nope. Um, hit escape here? Yes. Perfect. Okay. What's your password? Well, the username is demo. Demo. <laughs> All right. You actually right. <laughs> four oh four file not found. You gotta mm. join. That seems bad, Connor. You gotta join. I don't want to join. I just want to look at a scoreboard. Well, you gotta join. It's a private domain. Okay. Nice. Come on. All right. There you go. Twenty people hacking now in the audience. 24 people have solved things. There are 603 total solves. Let's look at the rankings. Is our server melting? <laughs> Absolutely not. You it's definitely the, the DEF CON Wi-Fi. It's not in our- live demo. All right, all right. while, while uh, that's loading, we'll just pull this up on my good. phone. So have you can... tried refreshing? <laughs> it's, it's spinning. It's got I spin. tried turning it on and off again. CTF. God. Oh, this is this is probably hey, it's loading. It says loading. Whoa. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, awesome. We have someone that solved the whole thing. Who is Chi uh, Chesum? Right there. Woo. All right. Oh, nice. Well, you can come back up and get uh, a challenge coin. Do you have one? Who's? Oh, where's Nob Nob Goose? Nob Nob Goose is here. Another name I recognize. Nob Nob Goose isn't here. Is are they? Just hacked in. All right. Nop Nop Goose, you can come get a challenge coin. Santa Montes, Shunt, Direct Delta. If you have solves on DEF CON Academy, run up, get a challenge coin. In the meantime, thank you for uh, coming to this soft launch preview of DEF CON Academy. Um, that started from the beginning. We'll just fast forward here. Two minutes. Mm, that's two more minutes than we need, my friend. All right. Awesome. So, DEF CON Academy wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the awesome efforts of you all who dive into this educational stuff and make it worth it. And it wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the awesome efforts of the Dark Tangent, who supports these awesome sort of things. And Perry, thank you. You, your vision made this actually possible. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. And all of these guys. Awesome. Thank you very much. And Connor Nelson. And Connor Nelson. Thank you. Hey, you finished early. That helps me.